Hello and welcome to episode 2 of At Home with John Fawkes, uh, the brand new SMA association series of former staff and students. Uh, we're going to be invited into various people's houses and to chat about their life and times at St Margaret's. Um, so obviously I'm joined by John, thanks for inviting us in John. Um, so continuing on from our last episode, obviously the, the building at St Margaret's has significantly changed in the last few years. Yes. Um, but when you first joined, um, how big was the building? What was, it, what was the facilities like? Well, one of the things that Mr. Brophy did when I arrived, it was probably standard practice, wasn't it? But he showed me round St. Margaret's. And um, I, I got a bit of a shock in some ways, really, because whoever had chosen the colours, the, the, the horrible sort of um, pinky walls on some of the classrooms, um, and, and then the lime green, mm. didn't really lend itself to sort of being, I thought, harmonious. But anyway, we, we had a look around the building, and I'm afraid it did seem, or, and it wasn't open, it had only been open about, what, 10, 11 years, and um, it did seem a little ropey, unfortunately. The walls were lined with lockers, which was okay in those days, because you only had about 400, 500 kids, uh, but um, certainly it had a worn look, mm. and, it, and, it, and it, um, it was certainly very tired, I think. Um, and I think the building has been a problem for successive heads right the way through my time at St Margaret's and um, we've seen all sorts of add-ons and additions and lean-tos really mm. and the conversion of cloakrooms into offices. I suppose um, over the years looking back the, the, the really big additions were the, the, um, the new centre for technology, the sixth form centre obviously, the refurbishment of all the, of all the science laboratories that had taken place over the years the entrance hall remodelling, the new administration block, of course, which mm. which was built over the head's office and the and the, off, the main school office and the staff room, and um, also, of course, more recently, the change to the dining hall, um, the new food technology centre, and the and the new hall. So, by and large, it's it's it has been transformed. Um, the things I, I remember most that I was most involved in really were first of all. Um, I, I did some work on the sixth form, of course, when I took over the sixth form, and we spent the whole of the summer holidays with four or five of us, actually, were good students who had some technical ability, and mm -hmm. by raiding churches um, for, for old pews, um, collecting, uh, by purchasing um, cafe seats from the dock road, um, and generally repainting and refurbing the place, we arrived at the end of the first summer holiday, when I'd just been appointed director of sixth form, with what appeared to be a sort of a, a sort of imitation pub, really, mm. which the students I think greatly appreciated. Because mm. when I um, when I look back that summer before we started all that work, there wasn't a stick of furniture in the place apart from benches around the walls. So I was very pleased, really, to to be able to start off, even though it was a great sacrifice, yeah. to to actually um, create that. I'm very grateful to the four lads who helped me because it really set the sixth form up, and that was the the first big project I undertook, really. Mm. Obviously, extracurricular provision at St Margaret's has always been yeah. very good. Um, now, I'm guessing you've been involved in countless trips over the times um, at have. St Margaret's. Yes, indeed. Have you got any good memories of any trips you've saw? Well, I mean, we, we had the most wonderful holidays. When I first arrived, um, there, were, there were several um, staff very much involved um, with going abroad. There was a school camp, of course, which was tremendous, which Mr Wilkinson ran for many, many years. Um, and um, but I wasn't really involved in that, although I did visit. But um, I learned my trade because you really have to learn your trade on school trips. First of all, on trips in Britain, Mr. Alan Moss was absolutely superb. I remember learning my 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 my, um, my earning my spurs on a London trip with Mr. Moss. He was he was very very good at it. And as far as abroad was concerned, mainly with Mr. Marsh who who uh, introduced me to the idea of, um, of joining him on a, on a school trip. And our first trip was to Wildersville in Switzerland, um, near Interlaken. And I remember I was involved with collecting the money and all the various passport issues because he had a year's secondment in Birmingham to do a B-Phil degree. And so that was the start, really, of, of Rod and Joff tours, which took us all over Europe, really, um, to Italy, um, to Rome, to Capri, um, to France, to, to, to um, Mont-Saint-Michel and Dinard, 
um, to, to Austria. I will never forget the cable car that stopped 10,000 feet up. I thought, oh, yes, wow. it was quite, it was swinging backwards and forwards. Um, but that was, that was another experience. But what we used to do, of course, with these trips was we, we, we used to tell the students quite clearly, if you wanted to come, there was going to be a, a heavy cultural involvement. So they knew, in a sense, what they were letting themselves in for. Um, although the, there were times in Italy, I can remember, when we would round the corner with the coach and the chorus would go, oh, not another basilica. Um, but nevertheless, they, they, they bore it with good grace. I remember um, a very nice holiday we had in Sorrento. Um, we saw Vesuvius, uh, Pompeii. And the last one that we did together was uh, Greece. We did a classical tour of Greece in 1987. Um, massively hot, but with a very good air-conditioned coach and a guide. And it was actually a superb holiday and they had a marvellous time. Um, so I think I can truly say hand on, on heart. Yes, we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, but also there were very educational trips and educational experiences. Since then, I've been involved with Mrs Barnes on a couple of, um, of uh, French exchange trips, which were themselves uh, very, very interesting indeed, and, mm. a, and a different take on a school trip, really. Mm. So I had a lot of experience over the years, and it was enormous fun. Mm. Obviously, it wasn't long before John was making a very good impression at St Margaret's. Um, now tell us about your first promotion at St Margaret's. Was that within the history department? Yes, Mr Brophy retired and um, basically the, 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 the post was vacant. Um, and I won't go into the great rigmarole of how I ended up being appointed. But certainly, um, eventually, I was appointed to be head of history. Um, for a time I ran the department on my own, which in a sense allowed me to prove myself um, but uh, certainly, um, yes, I was able to take over the department and um, as Mr Brophy well understood, I think, when he, when he passed it on to me, when it became my show, of course, the emphasis changed and um, certainly was very, very supported, much supported by the head, Mr Naylor, who gave me money for new textbooks and for um, new desks eventually as well. And so we began to um, revamp the history department um, bit by bit. Yeah. And obviously you were very well respected by students and staff within the school. Um, and it, so much so you were commandeered to support Brian Johnson within the sixth form? Well, yeah, that's interesting, yes. Uh, I, I was a sixth form tutor after a while. I think I was a first year tutor for about four or five years. And that was very flattering because it was because heads of year wanted me mm. to stay. But eventually there was a vacancy in the sixth form as a tutor. Uh, and... Um, I think that was possibly because Mr Brophy had retired, I can't remember fully now. But I began to work with Brian Johnson quite closely and when George Pallow, who was Head of Maths and Senior Master, retired in about 1980-81, there was a vacancy to help with careers in the sixth form. It was a voluntary job, there was no official job title. Um, so I stepped in to do that with the agreement of the Acting Headmaster, Mr Bob Mander, who had been Deputy Head under Mr Naylor and um, Bob supported me in that and I took over the careers in the sixth form in about 1981 and began my association and my learning curve in terms of the sixth form at that time. Very good. So that was John's first involvement within the sixth form um, and in episode three we're going to hear all about his time as director of sixth form at St Margaret's which spanned over 30 years um, and we're looking forward to hearing about that. So thank you, John, for joining us for thank episode you, two. Um, and we'll be back very shortly to conclude our interview with John. Thank you very much for watching. So would you say you're excited by the opportunity to lead the sixth form and put your personal stamp on the place? It was the job I really wanted. Mm. Um, I, I felt um, years ago that my own sixth form could have been much better and I felt it was something I could really make a, contrib well, make a contribution. And also, run my own show without the worries, in a sense, that the headmaster had of, of keeping the finances um, healthy and dealing with the local authority and with the, and with the diocese and all those things. Um, and so there's a great deal of camaraderie and enjoyment being director of sixth form, um, because you were there working with the students on the sixth form committee, Organising the various, helping them organise the various um, annual events that we had, be it fancy dress football or the annual Christmas review, um, whatever. 
um, and, and so it was, it was that working with young people and also helping them with their UCAS um, applications, job applications, um, which, which really um, was, was grist to the mill as far as I was concerned.